Case behavior in children is often measured as a hallmark of typical development. Notably, children diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder have atypical gaze behavior from looking preferences to metrics and timing, seemingly from very early in life. The metrics in this literature, however, have been largely collected through remote eye tracking measured while a participant is observing objects, faces, or scenes presented on a screen. To demonstrate validity with real world behavior, we need to make these measurements in the real world with dynamic social scenes. This presents challenges, however, since it is much easier to describe interest areas um, perspectively on a screen than in the real world with dynamic moving objects and people. It is currently also much easier to obtain reliable gaze estimation data using remote versus wearable trackers. We and others have contributed to this effort previously, both in terms of offline and real-time object and face detection strategies. Still, our field is a far away from having a tool that can be readily, readily used in clinical practice for measuring gaze behavior. In 2018, we presented a method for quantitatively analyzing gaze behavior in fixated object identification using a run length filter approach on the gaze and bounding box results. And this is from myself and my colleagues uh, published in IEEE Cognitive Development. Our current work improves on that in several ways. First, we improved the quality of the data by improving calibration. And we also smoothed the data stream by using a Kalman filter to remove blinking. Second, we use a faster RCNN face detector. Third, and most substantially, we developed a novel approach based on unsupervised clustering to substantially improve the detection of looks from the data stream. Fourth, we introduced a new set of metrics for evaluating performance of our model compared with a human rater providing ground truth. Previous results focused only on frame level accuracy, which is useful for analyzing, for example, the proportion of time spent by a subject in looking at different objects. But here we examine look level results as well. Look level results can have value for assessing the timing and naturalness of social gaze behavior. And finally, our current efforts uses objects from the COCO data set from Lynn and colleagues in 2014, which demonstrates that the system works well with real life objects common um, and hopefully sets up our efforts for broader use in the future. The details of the common filtering and the calibration can be found in the paper. From the COCO data set, we chose six real life objects that are shown in this figure that are that documents our experimental setup with two participants looking at each other, one wearing an eye tracker. The objects are a keyboard, a stop sign, a cup, a bowl, a bottle, and a monitor. The gaze tracking participant sits across from the other participant and, and the gaze tracking participant is wearing an eye tracker. All objects in the second participant's face are readily viewable by the eye tracking subject. We estimated a tight axis aligned bounding box around these objects detected in the world video using a faster RCNN approach from Ren and colleagues in 2015 that was pre-trained on the COCO data set using the TensorFlow Object Detection API from Huang and colleagues in 2016. For face detection, we used a faster RCNN model pre-trained on the wider face data set from Yang and colleagues in 2016. The detections obtained from the two networks were combined and henceforth we'll refer to the human face as an object in the list of seven objects of interest. Our overall goal is for the system to detect the looks of the subject to these objects of interest. Here in figure one, I'm showing you a system diagram beginning with gaze and worldview video data obtained from the Pupil Pro headset and ending with identified looks to these seven objects. The top of the diagram shows the overall data path while the bottom characterizes what constitutes look detection for each object. In the look detection diagram, which is an expansion of a middle step in the overall system diagram, the next unsupervised cluster, so, so excuse me, in the overall diagram, the first step is to recenter the coordinates on the center of each object. Next, the unsupervised clustering occurs. And we use the DB scan algorithm from Esther and colleagues in 1996 um, because it does not require the number of clusters to be pre-specified. It's also inherently density-based, which is appropriate for our needs here. Once the clusters are obtained, we only need to retain the clusters in a small region centered around the origin since we perform a separate clustering to find the looks to each object. And for this, we examine the detections of an object eye across all frames and find the dimensions of the maximum bounding box around each object. And next we retain the clusters whose centroids 
fall inside a 90% of the maximum bounding box for that object centered on the origin. We chose parameters for the DB scan algorithm based on the knee in this precision recall curve that's shown here in figure two. And that led to us choosing an epsilon parameter of 25. We compared our system's performance with a holistic human expert's ground truth evaluation of looks to objects. We sought to characterize performance in terms of precision, recall, and accuracy that are defined in terms of true positive, false positive, and false negative looks. The true positive looks were defined by ground truth, while false positive and false negative rates were assessed by instances where the system performance deviated from the human ground truth. So, for example, a false positive shown here. Um, is where the system deviated, it found a look where the human did not. And a false negative um, algorithm is where the algorithm fails to detect uh, a look where the human expert I did identify a look. And in this framework, um, precision is the true positive look frames divided by the sum of true positive and false positive um, look frames. And recall is true positive look frames divided by true positive and false negative look frames. And accuracy is the sum of true positive look frames divided by the sum total of true positive, uh, false negative, and false positive look frames. Now for some results. Although the frame level results showed somewhat better performance of the clustering approach in terms of accuracy and recall, um, we were more interested in the look level performance comparison of the clustering versus run length approach. The look level detection results that are shown here in figure four, excuse me, table four, reveal that the numbers of the false negatives are low, 1.8% for the clustering approach and 2.6% for the run length approach, indicating that most of the ground truth looks are being detected by both algorithms. For faces, Somewhat more looks are being missed by the run length algorithm, likely due to the subject looking around the face as is typical in face scanning. The number of extra looks is much higher for the run length algorithm, which means that it's splitting some ground truth looks into multiple looks to an object. The number of false positives is also much longer, much higher for the run length algorithm. Overall, the clustering algorithm is considerably more accurate at detecting looks overall. For the next steps, we plan to improve ground truth characterization of looks by using multiple trained raters. This would provide an advantage of whether the algorithm's performance is within the range of normal variation in trained raters. We're also seeking to speed up performance with the goal of running these calculations on a laptop in real time. Currently, the object detection step is taking the bulk of the time and is ripe for improvement. Thank you for listening.